We're going to be in James chapter 3. As you're turning there, let's open up in prayer. Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity tonight to come in and, and listen to your word. Lord, your word that is going to provide us guidance on how um, we need to discuss and need to talk about you. And what a blessing it is that you have given us these opportunities to just gather together and discuss and learn and grow in our relationship with you, Lord. And as we prepare to go um, in your in your brother's, uh, looking at your brother's words here and looking at your words, we just thank you for giving us the opportunity to be able to read these um, in this group setting. Lord, what a blessing it is, and just ask that you bless this group of individuals who are getting ready to, to listen to me, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. So, and listen to me is kind of, yeah, I can't blame you if you don't, right? So I've got this, got this huge issue. I've got this disease in a sense, right? So there's a constant battle that I have to go with this disease, and it has to do with my mind, and it has to do with my foot, and it has to do with my mouth, all right? So I think I'm funny, it's all right, so it's okay to laugh, see? I, I think I'm funny, but when I think I'm a little too funny and sometimes I get a little sarcastic and sometimes I get a little, um, I would say, uh, okay, maybe cocky or something like that, right? There's a tendency for me to put that foot right in my mouth and regret immediately what I said. Wouldn't it be nice to have like that DVR of our lives where we could just like, right, and just back it up, even just 10 seconds, like, oh, that was so stupid, I wish I could back that up, um, and not say what I just said. Kind of like this first part of this message, right? So as we, you know, look at James 3, it just immediately brings to mind um, even Proverbs, right, Proverbs 18, 21, when we talk about death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit, the power of the tongue is what we're going to talk about tonight. Um, it, it's just too often that I, and I'm sure most of you don't have this issue, I speak before I think. I type before and send that email, or today it's Facebook and Twitter and Snapchat, and oh, I need to remove it. Well, as soon as it hits that, we know it's out there, right? We can't pull it back. And there's a lot of difficulty in our words today. Um, if you're not familiar with, I, I teach the junior high youth group, and words hurt them more than what we think. All right? They are emotional sponges that when we tell them something, I mean, they believe all my lies, which is great, <laughs> but when we tell them something, really does affect them. I'm sure each one of us can remember back when we were kids and words that affected us. So we're going to see what James has to say about this tonight. Because we also know as much as words hurt, they can really build, they can really love, they can change people's lives, they inspire, they give hope. That's what we want to focus on. So in verse... 1 of James chapter 3 says, My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. So right off the bat, you're probably thinking, I'm so glad I'm not a teacher, right? I'm so glad, um, and I know I'm blessed that Pastor Pat's up here teaching. What a great teacher we have um, in this church, right? We are very blessed to have a great teacher, worship team, um, children's uh, pastors that pour into our kids and and we pray that what comes out of our mouths is solid, the truth, right? And we know that because what we're doing is we're following along. What a blessing that is. But we're going to take this into context of that back time. So what you had back in those days is you had a lot of people that wanted to really serve in the church for a title, right? So we're talking 2,000 years ago, um, even 1,500 years ago, 500 years ago, five days ago. We have people that 
are up here for the wrong reasons. They're not called by God. They just want a title. They want to share what they know. Some of us know a lot of people like that where they just know everything, right? And they want us to know that they know everything. I'm probably one of those guys. I get it, but that's okay. So, um, but, but here's where we need to understand. It's not just talking about teachers of the church. It's also talking about those who profess the word of God. Because if you profess the word of God, you are teaching, you are leading, you are sharing the gospel at some point. I believe you just don't want to go do that haphazardly. We want to make sure we know what we're doing, what we're saying. Um, we want to study up, right? That's why we read through the Bible. Um, that's why we uh, come to service to hear the message and um, find out what God is speaking to us. So we, as individuals, are constantly learning, but we're also constantly teaching. So this verse is for all of us. As I look at the teachers, and then it says, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment, that is, to me, for instance, just getting prepared for this lesson this week. When I read that verse, what do you think I did? I, was, I dropped, I didn't drop down on my knees because I was at my desk, but um, basically pray, talk to God. Hey, it, this is a, a little more serious than what I thought when I first started. I'm like, oh, I'm going to teach about the tongue. Yeah, this is going to be fun. Whoa, this is strict. What, I'm going to be in judgment over this teaching? Then the preparation began. Learning, listening. Um, in, in order to teach, I think we, we do understand that you have to be a learner. Well, they always say, what, a good, good leader was a good follower first? A, a good teacher was somebody that learned, right? And I think if we talk to Pastor Pat, I know um, I've talked to him many times about his teachings, and um, he is constantly learning, and how blessed we are that he is a constant learner, because then he's able to teach us, and from that we get the truth. Like Pastor Rob was saying, right? The truth, solid, Satan, question, fear, all that that kind of goes on. And then in verse 2, for he says, For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in a word, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. Wow. So I'm going to tell a little story um, about a man named Jed, poor mountaineer. No, I'm just kidding. So I, the junior hires just don't get that. I don't understand why. What are they showing on TV these days? All right, so, so, and this goes back, so my wife and I were having a conversation, as we usually do, as we're getting ready for bed, we're at the sink, and, um, and it goes back to my pre, or our, I shouldn't say my, um, our pre-marriage counseling, and there's a couple things I'll always remember from that pre-marriage counseling. One was that I should always have a working dishwasher. I don't know what that meant. But now I do know what that means. So, um, and then the other one is that the word divorce should never come out of your mouths. Should never come out of your mouths. So from that, I'm just talking and we're, and we're kind of ribbing each other, jesting, going back and forth. And, and I was like, oh, well, that's kind of uh, grounds for divorce. And immediately once I said that, my foot just show, I'm looking in the mirror and there it is. My foot's in the mouth, right? I've done so well for 24 years and now I blow it. Um, but my wife was reminded, you know, we don't say that word. And I was like, you're right. I apologize because there's nothing I could do at that point. I can't get that word back. I can't, right? So I can't back that up. But we all stumble. We all are sinners, right? Sin trips us up with our spiritual walk. If we do not stumble, and our word, we, we stumble with our words quite often. And from that, we have to understand Jesus forgives us. Right? And Jesus loves us. 
even when we disagree with what Jesus is doing in our lives. Even when out of our mouths, I don't, I have a lot of questions, God, what is going on? Jesus loves us. He cares about us. He wants us. He knows we're not perfect. Our tongues are not perfect. They are going to be, for all intents and purposes, and we're about ready to say, they're, they're bits in verse 3. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. So, a horse, 1,500 pounds, controlled by a, a little metal thing that goes in their mouth. Arizonans, we kind of been around horses. We, we know this. I do have a horse story to tell you if you're interested. So, there I was on a horse. I'm in Wisconsin, and I got the reins. I got this horse under control, right? First time I've ever been on a horse, and I was 19 years old. So I know what I'm doing. I got the reins, and this horse just kept wanting to take off. I could not figure out why I was losing control of this horse. And unbeknownst to me, my cousin, who's riding on the back, and I think he was six or seven, he was slapping the horse on the rear end. And I was like, this horse just will not listen, right? And I thought it was me, and I was doing something wrong. And there we are in the field, and we're galloping, and I'm like, this is really scary. So um, anyway, so that, that's the bit. That's the, the bit. Our mouths are the bit. It controls, and just like we've been studying, well, I guess it's been about eight months since I taught James chapter 2. But, so I'll remind you, but James chapter 2, right, talks specifically about our actions. Our actions reflect who we are. Our tongue reflects what's in our heart. What we take in and what we regurgitate, right, what we, as we will find if you are in Revelation and you're reading chapter 4, as it vomits out, right, we have a tendency to vomit out what we think is right. Opinions. I would say over the last couple days, there's been a lot of vomit coming out of people's mouths. Um, and from that, it's easy to sit back and judge them, isn't it? Oh, they're all liars. They're all storytellers. They're all, you know, I hate to break it to you, but that's the way our mouths are. We're going to find out in a little bit that our mouths really are not pure and clean. There's a reason why we have to brush them twice a day, right? So we need to really think about how we take those reins and are we letting somebody else control that bit? Are we letting somebody else control our actions, letting somebody else control what I do when I'm out in the workplace? I work for the um, government up on post, uh, military guy, 20 years, Air Force, um, Veterans Day, yay. Thank you for all the veterans out there, specifically the ones that have given their lives for um, our country. But have you heard the language up on post? Right? I can be in that environment, and if I allow them to control the bit of my mouth, I am not being the Christian that God has called me to be. So what, who's going to control my reins? Is it going to be me? Or, even better yet, is it going to be Jesus? Because if we allow Jesus to take over our heart, guess who's going to control those reins? I'd rather have Jesus control that bit in my mouth than myself, because I know what I'll do with it. In verse 4, he talks about, look also at ships. Although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder, wherever the pilot desires. So I wanted to, to show you a video of how big these ships have gotten and how the rudders have pretty much stayed the same size. I don't know if you're familiar, but have you seen the new cruise ship that just came out? I think it was like in April of 2018. So if you're not familiar with it, um, it has, it's able to have 9,000 people on it because that's what you want to do is go on vacation with 9,000 other people. <laughs> 
right? It's got 40 restaurants. It had, uh, I got some other stats here. It's just crazy how big this thing is. Um, 40 restaurants, 23 pools, uh, two theaters, an ice rink, 10-story water slide. Um, and then I wanted to kind of dig into it, and I took a look at the rudder, and you wouldn't believe how small the rudder is compared to the size of that boat. Oh, I'm sorry, ship. We don't want to call it a boat. That's for the Navy out there. But that rudder can get that ship into port, into places where I don't even know I could get a, uh, I don't even know if I could swim and get in there, right? So they get the ship into those tight places using a small rudder. Also, that small rudder can shut down the whole operations. If that rudder's not working, it's not going anywhere. It's not doing anything, much like our walk with Christ. We have an opportunity. We don't want to store this thing. The easiest thing to not sin is to what? Not do anything, right? Not say anything, not talk about Christ, not go into work and discuss um, your you know, belief system. That's the easiest thing. Maybe easy, but might be hard for some of us. The hardest thing is to let that mouth praise God as it is reflective in your life because what are we afraid of? I know I get called some names at work sometimes. Hypocrite? Anybody hear that? Christians, they're all hypocrites. You say one thing and do another. Well, yeah, you're right. But what's the true definition of a hypocrite? Somebody who claims to be perfect. I'm not perfect. I know that this mouth is a sinning mouth. I know I need Jesus Christ who died on that cross for me, for my mouth, for my mistakes, who purposely looks at me daily and says, thank you, I love you. That's the kind of stuff that we need to be talking about more. Fellowship. I know for me personally, when I hang out with a bunch of Christians, when I hang out with all of you, Thursday nights, I love coming to church on Thursday nights. It energizes me. I don't know, some of you, you're like, I'm tired. It's been a long day. And you're like, oh, I'm going to church. I don't know if I want to go. I can watch it online. Um, no offense to those out there watching it online. <laughs> but, but you really should be here unless you're out of town. Hi, Pastor Pat. So anyway, so, right? So fellowship. Why do we fellowship? It's, we don't come into this and say, oh, I'm going to hear about Jesus and how I'm such a bad sinner today. No. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing horrible. Let me pray for you. We've got our prayer room specifically for that. We've got these pews, seats, chairs, whatever we want to call them. All of us are sitting in there struggling with the same issue, struggling with the same sins, struggling with the same foot and mouth disease. Um, unless you're in our nursery, we don't have that right now, so we're good. So that's the hand, foot, mouth thing. But, right? So we have an opportunity to share the blessings of God with other believers. How awesome is that? And we come to church and we're excited, we're energized, and then we go home and go to work and hang out with those that we work with. And um, maybe we've got a great place to work and but we don't necessarily share uh, Jesus with them. And um, the only place I really get true, authentic fellowship is at church. Did I tell you there's a pool party happening on November 16th? That can energize you also. There's a lot of different activities that happen or that can happen outside this church where we have the opportunity to use this tongue to praise God, to thank God, and to receive prayer, to help others, to, 
you know, we all have a gift. We all have something to provide to each other. Let's fellowship together using that language, right? It doesn't have to be all negative because we know kind of what happens. He talks about it. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. We have the opportunity to share Jesus Christ with others, have the opportunity to lift each other up, to hold each other. And I know we like to say hold each other accountable, but at the end of the day, to really just be there for each other with our words. I've heard Pastor Pat, and I've been there when he's received some pretty negative feedback, um, judging him, uh, you know, just, and he'll tell you right off the bat, somebody who leaves the church, it's, it's like he's getting fired, and it kind of hurts. But what he likes to focus on is when he's standing at that door, and I know on Sundays when he's standing at that door, he loves talking to all of you, and how uplifting is it that we get to, to have an opportunity to say thank you to the guy that just delivered the message. Because I'll say this, most churches, they don't, the pastor's not as easily accessible as Pastor Pat is. And what a blessing that is to have conversation with our pastor, to have conversation with each other. And I, Javaluya is open Monday through Fridays. Why is it open? Is it so we can sell coffee? No. It's open so we can minister to whoever walks through those doors. It's open so we can share the gospel. It's open so we can, even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. We can do great things with Javaliya, with our mouths, with those who aren't even believers that come in and just grab some coffee. Even though, so I get Starbucks refreshers and I get so, yeah, Farrell sees me all the time. He's all like, you know you should be at Javaluya. Well, anyway, we won't get into that. But, so, and then the verse continues. See how great a forest a little fire kindles. How great a forest a little fire kindles kindles and the tongue is a fire a world of iniquity the tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature and it sets on fire by hell sets on fire by hell june 2011 most of us i believe were here june 2011 monument fire i was actually standing right up there for a totally different reason. So the fire went through the Huachicas, came down the mountain, burned, um, it burned 29,000 acres. Uh, it consumed or, dis or uh, damaged 40 homes, wrecked some people's lives. Some dream homes they've been working on for years were burned. The fire jumped roads. It was trying to be controlled by man. It was started from one spark. Gossip. Gossip does the same thing. One word. The devil can use one word, allow it to consume and destroy everything in its path, it doesn't matter if it's a church. It doesn't matter if it's a home. It doesn't matter if it's a family. It doesn't matter if it's a person. It can go through there and destroy a family with one word. We've all, we always talk about it. Well, that gossip spreads like wildfire, right? What a great or bad example that we have. Some of us have been hurt by gossip. Some of us have been hurt by words. Do you know, today, if you go up to the Huachicas, if you go up in there, you can still see scars from the, from the fire. Fire was seven and a half years ago. I still see burnt trees. I still see parts where I'm riding my bike, and then there's a, a burnt rock there, um, and I've seen it for years, and I know it was caused by that fire. Do you know words are the same way? They scar people for life. How often 
and we're going to sing a song later and fear, right? Fear is a liar. And we have those words that hurt deep. And how do we get out of that? How do we change that? What can we do to change that? Fellowship is a great way. How do you get rid of a fire? Do you just let it burn out or do you douse water on it, right? So how do you, at some point, we all know that you're, you're throwing water on it and eventually, if you throw enough water on it, it will go out. There might still be some burn marks and, and things like that. But when you walk through those doors, we're giving you and the Bible is giving you, and God is giving you, and Jesus is giving you living water that can get rid or put out or heal some of those words. He goes on to talk about it. For every kind of beast and bird of, of reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind, but no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Full of deadly poison. How do you get rid when you are bit? Does, does anybody know how when you're bit by a snake, a rattlesnake, the venom? You know what the antivenom is? So the antivenom is when they uh, will, I feel sorry for the, poor thing that has to go through this, but the animal, whatever, they inject the venom into it, the body reacts, and then it builds an anti-venom. And sometimes it takes multiple shots of that anti-venom to destroy or overcome that poison. Multiple shots. No different with our tongue. When we spit something out of our mouth and we say something incorrectly or maybe we damaged somebody or I've said a word, it may take a thousand words, it may take two thousand words to recover from that damage. But it takes one Jesus to overcome that from an individual perspective. One Jesus that says, hey, I love you. I get it. You screwed up today. It's okay. Come to me. Let's talk about it. Let's have conversation about it. Let's turn. Let's, let's make changes. Let's make choices. Let's change the way we talk. I actually, so I don't know if you've seen that video, but so one of my favorite animals is the bison. You know, they actually, this one family tamed a bison. It goes in the house. It, like, sits on the couch. Um, it, it walks around. It knows where the china is, so it doesn't go near it because it knows its tail will hit it and stuff. So, I mean, it, it's crazy to see this huge, uh, I think it's like 3,000, 4,000 pound animal in this house that's being tamed. 4,000 pounds, and, and here I got this two to three pound tongue. I actually had to look up the weight of the tongue because I was like, oh, that'd be kind of cool if we, anyway. So, <laughs> right, so the tongue can't be tamed. It's an unruly evil full of deadly poison. And I'm going to, as we go through verse nine, with it bless our God and Father and with it curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. Those we have been made made to be like God, right? That's what we've been made to be like, and that's what we can do when we bless our God and Father. But when we bless our God and Father, what are we doing on the other side? What, how are we behaving with our actions? How am I, when I'm professing God and Jesus at work, what would it be if I'm blessing him and then cursing out the other side of my mouth? At that point, how am I reflecting Jesus? That's what is really cool, the fact that we do get to bless our God and Father. And I know um, just being around the encouragement of fellow believers really helps me with my language. 
It helps me with my moods. It helps me. I know when I uh, have to go TDY and I purposely try and find a church because I know if I'm not around fellow believers and I constantly listen to the negativity that happens in the workplace on the news, especially since Arizona doesn't know how to count ballots, evidently. I've heard about this for the last three days. It's getting tiring, but I come to Calvary Chapel. I get to see all you. I get to be blessed by your presence and by your tongues. That's awesome. We need to stay focused on that and not only use that at church, but have I told you about a pool party November 16th? All right. Let's get out there and take church with us. James chapter 2, it talks about, hey, it's great. We come to church and we do all the th these things in church. But how are we really out and about in our neighborhoods, in our workplaces? Where are we at? What do we need to do? We need to be the same here as we are out there. We need to be the same out there as we are in here. Because I guarantee this, there's somebody you know, somebody you work with, family members, they need to hear the gospel. And they need to hear it from somebody like you that is willing to share it, that is willing, that cares enough about them to share it and let them know that no matter what they have done, Jesus still loves them. How uplifting would that be for for somebody who is contemplating suicide, who is talking about how, you know, their life is going horrible and they just don't know why and things are just going down and down and they're getting to a um, depression, they're suffering from anxiety, they're, you know, um, so I suffer from anxiety and depression and a lot of times if I talk to a fellow believer that has had that experience, my depression anxiety begins to lift. I don't think that's a coincidence. I think that's the power of the tongue. The power of words. Inspire hope. Because out in verse 10, out of the same mouth proceed blessings and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? What happens when you take fresh water and you add it to salt water? It doesn't become fresh, it becomes salty, right? Now, what happens if you continue to add more and more fresh water? At some point, the salt taste is going to get a little light. You're going to be able to drink it. You're going to be able to consume it. You're going to be, you know, it's still there. You're not removing the salt, but you're diluting the salt. You're making it more palatable. Or I guess they say potable. <laughs> Is it drinkable? I don't know. I go based off my cues from Isaiah. When he's done laughing, then I can continue. <laughs> well, there we go. All right. So, um, right, it becomes more palatable. Are we providing that fresh water for our offices, for our workplaces, for, um, you know, our neighbors, our neighborhoods, our family gatherings? We're all getting ready to have uh, Christmas. A lot of us are going to be spending it with family. So from that, am I going to bring fresh water? Am I going to help dilute and provide that, that, that tasting water or am I going to bring salt? Am I going to allow the salt water to consume my water? Am I going to allow it to overtake? Right? So the spring here, as we're looking at it, right, you can't have both, but I would like to say you could provide some fresh water to that salt water. You can help the situation rather than continue to let the situation destroy you. 
right? And so we do it for ourselves, but we can do it for others. Let our tongue be powerful this Christmas when we have the opportunity to share the gospel with those non-believers, with those family members that were sitting around the, the old oak tree or wherever we're at, and we're talking about family and having a good time and get it in there. Use that tongue. Let's talk about Jesus. Let's talk about the real reason why we celebrate Christmas. Let's talk about what Jesus has done in our lives this past year. Bring that fresh water to the salt. I know we can, we can do it. And then it says, can a, can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives, or a grapevine bear figs? Thus no spring yields both salt, water, and fresh. We all have gifts Every single one of us has a gift that we bring to the table. We all have a fruit. You are all, if you want to picture it, fig trees, apple trees, and um, apricot trees, and, and whatever trees out there that you can eat some fruit off of. Lemon? Banana. Oh, banana? Crab apples. Trees. Crab apples. <laughs> so there we go, right? So we all bring some gift. We bring some fruit right, to the table. We have an opportunity to bring that fruit, have an opportunity to surround yourself with other individuals, with other fruits, right? We all work together as a congregation, or I should say a fellowship of believers in Christ. We've got people um, currently uh, teaching the high school, helping out in the high school and the, in the children's ministry. We've got a lot of different things happening back here. There's a lot of things that are happening right now in here where gifts, people are praying, people are, uh, have brought other family members or uh, maybe they told them to tune in online. Or uh, There's a lot of action happening. We all bring fruit to the table. Let's share it. Let's share it. Can that fruit... can? Has anyone tried to give their uh, fruit tree salt water? Because if you do, it's, it's going to die. But you give it fresh water and that tree can blossom. Even a tree that you think has died, has not um, produced fruit for many years, and you begin to care for it and you begin to, unless you're Pastor Pat with his fig trees, he has problems growing figs, but I don't know what that's all about. But, right, we have an opportunity to feed and give our families fresh water. We have the opportunity to give our neighborhood and, and all the people we get to hang out with fresh water. Use your gifts. Don't just keep it for us. I mean, I love it that, that you're all here tonight, and I love it that we all... Uh, do a great job sharing, worshiping, singing. Um, if you haven't been to the junior high lately, which I know you haven't because I can't blame you. So from that, when we worship, we've got a group of kids right now that when they sing, it's just beautiful. That's fruit for me. It's got nothing to do with their... You know, and if you can imagine when you were 12 and 13 and, and you're singing with a group of your peers. I know I'd, I got in trouble one time at Boy Scouts. And I was, Dwight, we can't hear you. I don't think you want to hear me. But when they sing over there, the young ladies, and believe it or not, the young men, when they sing, what a blessing that is coming from their tongues. And to be honest, that worship, the teaching that night, usually just flows. It's peaceful. Now, at times they do come in and they bring that salt water in. And my job's just to pour that fresh water and dilute that, get it out of there. So tonight, as we get ready to close... I just have that feeling we need to go out there and just begin to douse those fires. Stop the gossip. Stop, you know, it, be encouraging. 
Let's begin to change our tongues and control. Let Jesus Christ take control of the reins. Take control of the will. I'm just kidding. But that's a song, no? Jesus, take the will. Oh, there's my singing. You don't want to do that. So let's close in prayer. Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity tonight to hear the power that our tongues have that we can change the world, Lord. And all we have to do is talk about you. All we have to do is focus on you and let it come out of our tongues. Let it come out of our mouths, Lord. Help us be uplifting this week to somebody that is struggling, to somebody that is hurting, Lord, that they're struggling and maybe they've heard it time and time again that they're no good or they're not worthy or they're not wanted, Lord. Help us be your voice coming to them, telling them that you love them, that they are wanted, that they are loved. And Lord, just give us those opportunities if, if it comes across this week and, and just help us be strong and help us rein in our own tongues. In your son's most holy and precious name, amen.